Well, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy lives to step apart from the busy affairs of a complex, uh, rancorous world to uh, contemplate the future uh, of our great city. Uh, I'm very grateful to welcome my elected uh, friends and partners at uh, the county level. I especially would like to uh, acknowledge for the third time in, in three years, uh, Armin Budish. Armin, if you'd stand up, our county executive. So it's a testimonial to his interest in uh, communities like Lakewood that he's here to understand what, what we're thinking about and what we're facing. And of course, uh, in local government, uh, you can't do anything without great partners, and I'm very fortunate to be able to work with a great city council. Sam O'Leary, our council president. Sam, if you'd stand. And Cindy Marks, at large, candidate. Dan O'Malley, Ward 4. John Litton, Ward 3. And Ryan Nowlin, of, uh, at, also at large. And I think uh, Dave Anderson uh, is expected to arrive late, as is uh, Tom Bullock. Uh, so we're grateful to have you here. And you folks actually could tell most of this story. So if, uh, if I f fall off the stage, one of you may have to step forward and, and pitch in. Um, also in Lakewood, we, uh, you know, we're particularly fortunate uh, with a massive amount of reinvestment to benefit from the leadership of our Board of Education. Joining us tonight is uh, the current president of the Board of Education, Bets Betsy Shaughnessy, and Superintendent Jeff Patterson. And I'd like to acknowledge uh, the directors, if you'd all stand. Um, one of the key elements, uh, one of the key elements, if not the key, and, we, and Police Chief uh, Tim Malley's in the back, uh, really are, are directors of a government. They are effectively your vice presidents in a private sector organization. They're the ones that actually deliver your government day in, day out, week in, week out. Uh, my job is to uh, support them, encourage them, give them the resources they need, and get out of their way as much as I can so that they can do the serious work of taking care of our citizens. And I, I will tell you, it's a real pleasure for me to work with these directors. And, and they take their responsibility very seriously. And what is very unique is uh, every one of them uh, actually lives in Lakewood. So uh, I don't think that's the case in, in, uh, in most cities. So not only is this their hometown uh, that, that they're working for, uh, they have a job that's designed to protect it, and that's a great uh, relationship to have. And, and you can imagine the liveliness of conversations when we talk about a subject that even it might not be a human resource question or a finance question, as neighbors and residents here, uh, they offer a very important view. Uh, and uh, that makes it uh, a more robust conversation, so it helps advance the quality of government. And I would be very remiss and very regretful if I didn't acknowledge the great support of my wife, Wendy. Uh, th through these past seven years in particular, Wendy has had more dinners alone than, uh, than I'll ever be able to make up for, and I, she's very kind to uh, generally try and help me to have a dinner when I get home at whatever hour, and I'm grateful for that, among everything else. So we're also here to acknowledge this new upgrade of our console facility. Uh, it was, uh, was finished last August. It took us a couple years to figure out how to do it and then to finance it. It's about a $160,000 investment. Uh, but there's several things that are being accomplished tonight. One, we're showing it to you, which is one of our goals. Two, we're learning how to use it, which is one of my goals, and we're also experimenting with some alternative and expansive communication. Actually, right now, we are streaming live through the internet to, according to Randy Brudgett in the audience, at least we have one audience member out there who's watching it on the internet. So we've, uh, we've never been able to achieve this kind of interaction on a global basis, so uh, we're excited to experience this and looking forward to have Marilyn give us some feedback, Randy, when she's done, if, if it made sense. Uh, now, also, uh, tonight, uh, we, will, we are recording, and there's a camera that you see hanging down in the middle there, and uh, the recording uh, will be on the website tomorrow. So if you find yourself uh, distracted, dozing off, or otherwise at a critical part and wished you'd uh, paid a little more attention, you've got another bite at that apple. So let's get started. Uh, we continually have four main goals that drive our strategic thinking in Lakewood. Sound governance, safe and secure city, economic development, and vibrant neighborhoods. Uh, and tonight, we will share key elements of our progress towards these goals. In addition, we will identify key opportunities and challenges 
challenges that face this community. In addition, we wanted to reacquaint ourselves tonight with the six main pillars of our community vision. And uh, they're listed here, and also on your handout, you will see a little key to remind you as we go through that if you see the little emblem on the lower right-hand corner, what it is, uh, what part of the vision the strategic conversation is linked to. But community wellness, housing, mobility, education and culture, safety, and commercial development are the, sort of the pillars that drive the future strength of where we want to be in a city now and 50 years from now. It's important we spend a few minutes to talk about sort of the financial position of the city because it determines so much of what's possible here. This is an important graph. It shows that in 2011, uh, significant state policies have been very adversarial to local governments, including our counties and our transit boards and our cities. This map shows that many, many cities around us, our neighbors, have been compelled to raise their income tax rates to address these pressures. Most of our neighbors, by the way, uh, also charge a refuse collection fee. We have not raised our taxes. We do not charge a, a refuse collection fee. Thus far, we've taken many other approaches to address these same pressures. Our income tax rate of 1.5%, which was established early on in the first year of President Reagan's uh, first term, is among the seven lowest income tax rates in the county. We have worked hard and succeeded in increasing the financial base upon which this tax is applied. We continue to be very focused on cost control, uh, and we continue to work hard to increase the productivity of every tax dollar that uh, our citizens are uh, kind to share to the advancement of our city. And today, we do not need to raise taxes and have no plans to do so. And additionally, we have no plans to add a refuse pickup fee. But I am worried. I'm worried about a federal government that talks pretty liberally today about uh, uh, diminishing their support for Medicaid in Ohio. We know that could cost billions to a state government. And those billions of loss of revenue that comes from the federal government support to our state in many states like Ohio will ripple down and, uh, and affect us locally. We get about one and a half million dollars a year left, half of what we used to get in terms of local government fund. We're fighting hard in this budget. Here in Ohio, cities are fighting hard together to retain that, that could be at risk. Additionally, a uh, very important element of our strategic investments to support Lakewood are our federal block grants. It used to be close to $4 million a year, today about $1.8 million, and those are on the, on the chopping block. And they've been for quite some time, uh, but this, uh, the forces working against her are probably more formidable than they've ever been. So those together would be an additional $3 million of loss. That would be painful. And uh, we're not there yet. We're fighting hard not to get there. But uh, we've uh, creatively avoided all these previous pressures, but there's more coming, and we have to be cognizant of that. Another key element of the tax base in our region from a local standpoint is the property tax. In the opinion of many, uh, Lakewood is uh, in the top third. In fact, we're in the middle third in terms of affordability of that tax. That's much uh, contrary to what you might think, and it's really uh, our rate, which is higher than most, applied to our median household value, which is lower than most. When you put the two together, the actual check we write is in the middle third of the size for the county. The most important element of that today, though, and about 60% of that supports our public schools, 10% supports local government, and 30% supports uh, county government initiatives, health and human services, port authority, and metro parks, and, and a few other elements that are important to the fabric of our, of our community. But in Lakewood, the property tax we pay, particularly those that are support the schools, are over overwhelmingly recognizing the massive investment that our school board has successfully led to a $300 million retooling of our every school building to be finished this summer uh, for our school's second century. So not only do we find ourselves in the middle third of affordability, what we get for those tax dollars is disproportionately a higher value than almost most all other communities in the county. So I applaud the leadership of our school board for that foresight and the fortitude and the determination to lead us to really a, a very competitive position in terms of the quality of life here in Lakewood. Just like most organizations, financial strength is enhanced when revenues rise and costs are managed, and that's been the case here in Lakewood government. The key economic driver for Lakewood is the financial strength of Lakewood's households. We are not a company town. We are dominated uh, disproportionately by the success or failure of a few employers. This graph demonstrates two key trends. Uh, the, 
the household income, which is the blue going up, uh, shows a rising rate of household incomes per capita in the uh, city at a very, very compelling rate. There are a few other cities in the county that look like this. The other line is uh, really uh, shows our headcount, which is how we primarily manage our costs here at the city of government level. And we've worked hard over the last five years to maintain a very appropriate but stable level of our headcount. That's how we manage our costs most successfully. So you put those two trends together and we find ourselves in a position of gaining financial strength. And that's important to the element of investment capacity. In fact, Moody's, the bond rating agency, just yesterday, uh, well, I guess it was Monday, uh, released uh, an upgraded report that rated our recent note issuances at the highest credit rating available for notes. And they maintained our AA2 rating for all the rest of the creditworthiness of the city's financial position, which is the second highest rating available for cities like Lakewood in the country. So that's a reaffirmation of both the trends and the ability and strength uh, for investors to think about, uh, about Lakewood. We have talked in the past about how our efforts to improve internal performance through Lean Lakewood. Now you might remember that this initiative uses operator experience, it uses direct observation, and it uses common sense to identify uh, process improvements that will minimize waste, effort, and cost to gain speed, improve quality, and lower cost. This year, uh, we are undertaking a very huge project to upgrade the enterprise software that governs our entire police record keeping system. We will leverage this effort to review and streamline hundreds of critical processes uh, that ultimately will improve integration of police and fire activities to improve quality of speed in both our uh, reporting and analysis. And as you can imagine, in a complex world today of, of crime prevention and uh, prosecution, having good and accurate uh, data throughout that entire cycle from the dispatch call where we've got a problem to the reports that ultimately may lead to an investigation and arrest and then ultimately a prosecution in a court of law. All that demands an enormous amount of high quality information. And being better at that is a key element of what we're about to achieve here in Lakewood. And we, at the end of the day, will have more resources available for more effective public safety. Last year, we announced the implementation of our body-worn cameras. Here we see Ward 3 Community Police Officer Matt Wintrick holding such a camera. Well, let's see what one looks like. So uh, here is uh, what happened a day or two ago, a storm or two ago, I think. This is more benign than most of uh, what you might experience on a police officer, helping someone push out of the snow. But pay attention to the quality of the imagery. So we're seeing what a police officer sees at any time uh, that they need to engage. And we also are hearing what they hear. So uh, that gives you a sample of a, a massive amount of data that we're producing and collecting on an hourly basis, all designed to enhance our effectiveness as a police force. So I credit our leadership on our police force, Chief Malley and his team, and our officers who embrace this technology to uh, provide uh, enhanced effectiveness. Now, last year we announced the big gig fiber optic investment to better serve our government, our schools, and our library. The job is finished. Uh, our one key benefit is expanded public surveillance uh, cameras to act as a deterrent and to aid in investigation and help us to improve safety. These cameras are force multipliers. They are leveraging our existing high responsiveness from our public safety forces. So let's take a quick look here at what we see in a, a minute-by-minute -minute basis. This is actually a screen snapshot. You see that each of these 46 cameras is gathering a particular view of the city. They can be enlarged. We can direct the cameras to a particular position uh, if we need to. And most importantly, they are recording. And so if something were to happen in our city in a public space, we got a good chance of looking backward in time and more effectively uh, uh, in, in getting our investigation and improving our safety. Well, it's important to acknowledge the scourge that the opiate addiction is having on our society, and, and that certainly includes us here in Lakewood. Conventional approaches uh, to stem this tide just seem to be inadequate. It's time to get creative. Uh, our police force, our fire, EMT, and paramedics, our human services, county, and nonprofit agencies are working together to craft strategies to engage more effectively uh, in the post-overdose period of an addict, in the life of an addict. That's our best shot at how we can understand 
uh, what, uh, what the forces might be at play for someone who is afflicted by this addiction to, to take value and take action. So we're working hard to engage at that moment in time, really a day or two after, and provide more effective options uh, to see if we can gain on this. I will tell you this is very challenging work. And it does, however, address a major uh, aspect of what we consider the vibrant neighborhoods as our goal. But I'm hopeful that at this time next year we will be able to announce uh, some significant improvement uh, towards this particular challenge for us. Effective April 1st, the City of Lakewood Division of Aging is partnering with Senior Transportation. Heretofore, we provided these services internally. Um, and this, uh, this uh, leveraging this, this service, which has continued to advance itself to help our older residents gain uh, transportation to medical appointments, will be an improvement. Prior to this, we used our own buses and we used cab vouchers. They worked, but this will work better. Uh, and uh, will, we believe it will provide more expansive transportation options and better service. Uh, and we're looking forward to having our seniors receive this benefit. Now these days, great debate exists in our society regarding our approach to refugees and immigration. As a practical matter, 60 million people across the world are displaced for reasons of war, famine, religious disputes, and economic distress, 60 million. And Lakewood's story is really one of immigration. From the Slovaks who settled in Birdtown initially, the Irish Catholics and Germans who dominated our ancestral heritage in our first 100 years, the Palestinians of the 80s and 90s, the Eastern Europeans, including today's Romanians and Albanians, Southeast Asians, and likely tomorrow, Syrians. At last week's community meeting, uh, community breakfast, that, uh, sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce and our Board of Education, uh, we uh, heard a discussion of our community's educational commitment to welcoming and advancing the education of students from over 30 different countries annually. And for me, a poignant and teaching moment occurred when one of the panelists mentioned how important it was to her to receive a smile, a smile uh, from one of the students when she showed up for her first day in class not speaking a word of English. So that simple method of smiling was a key link to welcome. So here in Lakewood, uh, one of the things we can control, in fact, is a heartfelt welcome to all who find their way to our door. And the best way for each of us to extend that that, that welcome is a genuine smile. It's within our control. I'm certain there's more we can do as a city and as a community, uh, and we're gonna aspire to do that, but we can be a welcoming community to these immigrants and we can smile. The Hilliard Theater's gone. This demolition was four years in the making. The taxpayers of Lakewood paid $700,000. Cuyahoga County uh, government helped us with an additional $200,000. And while we regret the loss of this once vibrant theater, its vacant status over the past three decades rendered this as a safety threat to our community and certainly an eyesore. It's an example, though, of an expensive but necessary role of government. Nobody else would have the obligation nor the ability to look at the returns uh, on investment, which is a vibrant neighborhood of a $900,000 demolition. We look forward to someday a vibrant reuse of that space. Unfortunately, today we still don't own the land. Uh, we're working to uh, gain control. Housing Forward Initiative began in 2011. We've talked about it every year and, and probably will continue to. And uh, we, we continue to make great strides in the quality of our housing stock. In phase, phase three, version 3.0, our standards have been increased in terms of our inspection criteria. We've identified 1,200 additional houses that are gonna receive focused uh, attention for improvement. And I would say if there is a strategic bullet in the strategy of Lakewood to preserve its integrity both in terms of quality and financial capacity long-term, it is our housing stock. Our housing values, although still below the 2006 high water mark, are recovering faster than 90% of the county. It's essential that we stay riveted on this important element, which is housing quality. McKinley Place is emerging, 41 units. You can drive past it in West Clifton and see the dramatic change there from our cherished old school that I attended, apparently wore it out. Um, uh, and today we're witnessing a $14 million increase in housing value from this 41 unit, and the good news is 80% of them are sold, 80%. These are generally folks who are uh, moving from outside Lakewood to these units uh, because they as aspire to that style of living. The same is true of Rockport, site of the former Fairchild Chevrolet dealership and Kepke Motors, 51 new townhouse units in phase two, an additional $13 million of housing value, 
24 are sold. And that really just started last year. The success of both of these developments reinforces the wisdom of continuing to add to other housing style choices while we protect and preserve our trash 100 year old housing stock. Each year we remind ourselves of the importance of our shared space, our parks. Since last year's speech, we have advanced our plans for two very important neighborhood parks, Cove Park and Wager Park. This is Cove Park as it exists today, thanks to the railroad tracks off Cove Avenue. And this is Cove Park as it will look like beginning this fall. Uh, it's an exciting transformation which will bring far better use to this important park. Wager Park, which is at the intersection of Hilliard and Madison, as it looks today. And Wager Park, as it will likely look in a couple years. Both Cove and Wager Park plans were developed and improved in a very dramatic way through extensive and community engagement. So our community helped shape the vision and the context for each one of these important investments to our quality of life. We were in the final stages of a $1 million upgrade to our biggest playground, Kids Cove and Lakewood Park. We're on track to finish by late spring, and we're targeting Memorial Day. That's as it looks right now, and sort of a diagram of some of the key elements of how it will exist uh, post Memorial Day this year. One of the key elements is, is uh, playground safety. Uh, today, parents more than ever want to be able to keep an eye on their children at every minute, and previous designs uh, didn't allow that to happen as well. This, this one will certainly do that and plenty more, and there's going to be many exciting features that the kids will really enjoy working on. Well, we are working feverishly on US EPA phase two requirements to comply with the Clean Water Act. Our integrated wet weather implementation plan is at heart at play. Uh, the next major deadline for us is uh, March of 2019 in terms of meeting some expectations by our regulatory partners, the EPAs. Uh, and Lakewood's 100 year old complex sewer system built uh, very early in the last century performs very well as designed. Unfortunately, its behavior by today's environmental standards is unacceptable. So this picture shows a bioswale in front of Madison Park doing what it's designed to do, which is to capture groundwater more effectively and keep more of it out of our sewer system. Put more of it in the ground and let our ground be our friend and let us put less volume that uh, challenges us when we have these big wet weather events, these big rainstorms. Our everyday volume is not our problem. We're actually at 40 times capacity of our everyday volume. It's the big storms, and that's the challenge for every city across the country. One of the uh, key elements to that, though, is we've got more big storms than we've customarily had. Mother Nature is ramping up her intensity and uh, bringing more violence and, uh, and, and water to California. We saw record rains. They needed it, uh, and certainly that's the case here. Uh, so our designs are key elements of, uh, of how we're going to effectively uh, improve that. You probably didn't see this big hole. It actually was over on the west end of Lakewood off Scenic Drive at the very end of the Detroit Extension. It's a, 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 a basically a sewer enhancement to capture and redirect uh, more storm and sanitary water to our plant that previously in these big wet weather events, we would be discharging uh, untreated uh, vo high volumes of storm water mixed with sanitary water. Probably about 85% storm 15% of sanitary, but that's unhealthy water by today's environmental standards, and it needs to be addressed, and this is a key element. And part of that advance, investment is uh, redirection through a massive pipeline. This is about a $4 million job, dollar job. Uh, we're in the final stages of completing it, and we will begin to benefit from it likely this summer. Uh, and this is a key element of why your sewer rates are rising. Uh, we need to fund these projects. Uh, our goal is to work collaboratively with our regulatory partners, the EPAs, and be on good administrative terms versus under the control of a federal judge under a, a consent decree, which most of the rest of the region is under. Thus far, we've avoided that, and one of the reasons is because we're making good faith investments such as this one. Another big project that's on our plates is uh, the addition of uh, a very rapid rate treatment facility that will be uh, built into the existing wastewater treatment facility, probably a 20 plus million dollar investment. Um, and this will be able, allow us to take uh, that 85% stormwater, 15% sanitary, and treat it in a high volume way as opposed to the slower biological method with microbes that customarily we use. Uh, and uh, this will be a chemical process uh, that will look in a facility similar to this that will allow us to uh, eliminate millions and millions of gallons of untreated uh, sewer water into our watershed. So this is going to be probably a four or five year project at the minimum, and plans are underway to address it now. 
Now, this is a great way to think about one of the more obvious investments we've made recently, and that's our sidewalks. We have repaired 71 miles of sidewalks. That's equivalent of walking from here to the Pennsylvania border. So think about that. We could walk to the Pennsylvania border, and that's how many miles of sidewalks we've actually improved through grinding, through slab replacement, uh, and uh, through, um, through leveling. When we finish in year 10, we're about to enter year 5, we will be able to effectively shuffle off to Buffalo. Uh, that's how far we uh, will have improved our sidewalks. And that's an important element of our quality of life in terms of uh, walkability, which we're very proud of here. Another goal, of course, is to be one of the liveliest local economies in the region. It improves our quality of life by making more options available to us locally to work, shop, and play. And it creates a capacity for investment in our future. This is a picture of Roundstone Investments' new headquarters, the former Christian Science Building across from the library. They moved in in January. They brought 50 jobs uh, to us from out of the city. And it's a great example of very challenging adaptive reuse of commercial space. And this is important because the economic base of cities like Lakewood is dynamic. It ebbs and it flows. Things come to us, things leave us. We can look at the dismal state of retail malls across the country as great examples of a, a bygone great idea of probably 50 years ago that probably is struggling, struggling to survive and may not make it in the next 10. Many communities depended on those retail outlets for their viability. So they are going to have to remake themselves and rechallenge these. In fact, there's eight such uh, retail uh, malls in our inner ring suburbs across uh, our region here in Cuyahoga County uh, that are very challenging to those communities. And we're working together as first ring suburbs to advance the health of all of our first ring suburbs. And for Lakewood, and as it does all cities, it requires a constant effort to support the attraction, retention, and redevelopment of this commercial space. Our partnership with Lakewood Alive, where's Ian? I know you're here. Uh, and uh, with Madison Mad Avenue Merchants, uh, Chamber of Commerce, and others are critical to the economic resilience that we, we uh, experience and need to continue. We've talked already this year about the transformation of three blocks downtown. We were beginning in this transformation to expect a minimum of about $120 million to $160 million of private reinvestment. And you see here the Lakewood Center North Family Health Center, the hospital redevelopment site in Westerly Phase 3. That's just in one three-block section. We won't talk more about that now because there will be lots of conversations in the future. But you can access the development on uh, one, onelakewood.com slash downtown RFQ. That gives you a lot of updated information. Well, the groundbreaking on the new Family Health Center is scheduled for April 4th. And you can see the site as it looks uh, right now and as we shift to different and modern health care. Uh, and we're trying to keep ahead of a curve. And I will tell you, this conversation about the future of Affordable Care Act is an important and timely one in terms of its impact on what uh, institutions will be uh, viable and the remain viable. But right now, I think this transition, uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, allows us to uh, be much more resilient to uh, the, the health care shifts that are, that are happening before our eyes. One of the key elements, of course, is to maintain uh, local emergency services on the first floor. On the second and third floor, we will see investments in impactful and financially sustainable health care versus sick care that provides more prevention and early detection than we've ever had in our community. Uh, this will allow us to address some of the biggest challenges we know are our health needs here, such things such as lifestyle choices of, uh, that result in obesity, tobacco, drug and alcohol use, and those are characterized by symptoms of diabetes, high blood pressure, and chronic pulmonary issues. And they include also additional challenges of uh, mental health. Uh, so this will bring also uh, Cleveland Clinic's Family Medicine Residency Program to our community. This includes 18 new physicians. Uh, they're fresh out of medical school. They're exuberant. They've made a decision to become family care doctors, and we're going to have 18 of them resident here in our community. Uh, since they do move around, that effectively means about five and a half full-time physicians will be additionally here than we've had before. Uh, and uh, they are determined to be uh, engaged in our community and whatever that means uh, in terms of our needs. Uh, so these uh, historic history shows that these 18 residents, and there'll be basically uh, six new ones roughly each year, so the 18 total, they're here for three years, they tend to stay in our region. And in Lakewood, we've got a three-year sales pitch. They're going to be here for three years, uh, and I'll take those odds. I think we can sell some of these folks to come and stay here with three years of experiencing our great community. And those are good odds, and we look forward to that. We look forward to cutting the ribbon on this new facility in uh, next summer, 2018. 
The solid fortress look is the term brutalist style. It was very popular in the 70s. I think we'd all look back and say that was not our greatest architectural era. <laughs> Fortunately, new ownership is creating uh, and repositioning this almost vacant commercial office building. So soon, it will look like this, and inside, it will reemerge as a mixed-use tower with 150 residential units with top floor commercial office space, a $12 million private reinvestment right in our downtown core. Friedrich Moving and Storage moved to a larger facility. This structure, probably looks even more brutalist, uh, has been challenged to find its next life. Well, very happily, we will begin to see its transformation this summer. The Thomas family is investing nearly $3 million to repurpose this structure into the small batch, old grain, organic Western Reserve distillery, employing ultimately about 20 jobs. A big transformation on Madison's commercial corridor. Well, the work we do here in Lakewood requires an enormous amount of citizen input, and that's structured in many ways. There are 200 positions in our boards and commissions that deliver uh, the uh, uh, effective decision-making on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and, and additionally, there are uh, task forces that shape some of the unclear emerging issues. Tree task force, managing our urban forest, public art task force, clean water task force, active living task force. These are engaged, informed citizens who do a great deal of research and help shape issues that uh, allow us to make more informed, better decisions long into the future, and you'll see evidence of that. Uh, and I would say that uh, a big part of a healthier Lakewood is, um, in fact, better eating. And uh, City Council and I are working together with Cornucopia Nature's Bin to explore how we might offer healthier, more abundant choices of concessions in Lakewood Park this summer. It will serve several purposes. Uh, it will be more available food, more choices, and it will also support their mission of retraining their clients uh, towards more work-ready establishments. So we're going to work together and creatively and, uh, and do some things differently, I think, that will enhance the park experience and, and health as well. I want to thank our Board of Education again and our first federal on a multi-million dollar investment that's underway as we speak to add a much needed exercise capacity to our region. Here we see the new Lakewood High, High School Fieldhouse under construction. It will feature the, uh, the three-lane, ten-lap-to-mile track. Adjacent to this track will be a 7,000 square foot aerobic workout space with ec exercise equipment. This is a good example of expanded thinking, leveraging our collective resources uh, and understanding the impact that our active living task force and other common sense things have brought to us and have forced us to stretch to think what's possible. So our city government is exploring ways that we can support this important investment that the Board of Education has seen clear wisely to, to proceed with. On Madison Avenue, we saw these uh, bike lanes emerge this past summer. It encouraged more of us to use bikes as a vehicle for mobility. It stands as our most visible testimony to our commitment to continue to transform habits that are less car-centric. And it certainly will be better for our health and certainly better for the environment. More to come, we're beginning to explore Lake Avenue striping options as we begin to figure out how we're going to resurface that three-mile-long street. Well, this 1960s picture of Foster Pool reminds us that our swimming pools built in 1958 and 1959 haven't changed much. Uh, and our, these pools, by and large, were designed to address then the high, highly expected need of competitive swimming. Today, less than 6% of our citizens use our pools for, for that purpose, our outdoor pools. So this year, we will work with the Board of Education and the Recreation Department to begin to explore and understand strategies that will improve this outdoor asset for us. This will likely require four to six years of serious work, and ultimate costs at today's dollars will likely be in the $3 million to $7 million range. So it's important we begin this conversation. Well, hopefully, you've gained a sense of the excitement, the drama, the challenge, and the opportunities facing this great city. I'm confident that we are focusing on the most important issues facing us, but I'm even more confident that working together, uh, we will continue to uh, advance the quality of life in this, this community. Now today, Every day, every hour, it seems, we feel and hear how divisive our society is. That certainly gives us a lot to think about today, and there's a lot to try and understand. But one thing is certain. Here in Lakewood, there is a great deal more that unites us than divides us. And remember that smile of the uh, immigrant, the young immigrant woman uh, showing up in uh, elementary school, being welcomed by a smile? Well, I tell you, that works well for our neighbors, too. 
So thanks for listening tonight. As has been our custom, I am delighted to address any questions that you might have about the future of Lakewood. Thanks for being here. Ah, I forgot to introduce Dale Miller. Thank you. Dale, thanks for being here, our county council representative who worked with us. Worked with us to get a $50,000 grant for Lakewood Alive. Thank you, Dale, uh, through county council and, uh, and other investments as well. Did I miss anybody else? A question. Yeah. Is the money on Facebook asking uh, you about coyote stuff? Coyotes. That's my newest uh, favorite subject. Uh, coyotes. Uh, Coyotes have actually existed. In, well, the question is about coyotes, and the fact is there are coyotes in Lakewood and have been for quite some time. Uh, actually, there are three families of coyotes that live in Lakewood, one in uh, each section of the town, one in the southeast quadrant around Madison Park, one in the southwest quadrant uh, south of I-90 in the Lakewood Heights, Niagara Street area, and there's a pair that uh, are living around Lakewood Park. Uh, that's the group that we're particularly interested in right now, that pair. Uh, fact is, there have been four bites on dogs of likely that pair uh, in the last month, four, four different bites, four different dogs, uh, four different locations, four different times. So coyotes generally are very afraid to engage with, uh, with people, and, uh, but apparently this coyote uh, or a pair may, may not be so frightened. So we have, uh, for the first time, actually engaged a trapper who will put some uh, traps in and around uh, the appropriate areas and uh, these coyotes will hopefully leave our city. Um, I don't want to go into any more detail than that, to, but you can get the idea that uh, it's probably a threat to uh, the quality of life of our, and potentially safety. There have been a couple instances where uh, likely one of the pairs of this coyote has stared down some people, uh, trailed some people in Lakewood Park with dogs, and uh, I think it's time that we take the appropriate action. So we've engaged an outside resource. Shaker Heights, according to Joe Benno, our director of public uh, works, says they do this all the time. They have the same trapper, and I, I do want to make sure we've got the right trapper, because they apparently felt theirs was pretty good. Uh, but that's uh, unique to Lakewood. I don't know that we've engaged in anything like this before. Uh, we'll keep you posted. Uh, it's likely these traps will be on private property, and uh, we need to make sure that our citizens are safe while they're there, and we're going to work hard to do that. Yeah, great question. Thank you, Alex. Uh, uh, any other questions that come before? You or me? Well, to our internet audience, uh, we wish you had an opportunity, and I'm glad actually you were able to get one off Facebook, Alex. Well, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're figuring this out. Uh, so I tell you what, uh, we'll, we'll close tonight. I will remain up front if you are interested in addressing a quish, uh, question or an issue. Uh, city Council is here, as are our directors, but I want to thank you for taking time to learn about your great city. So. With that, I wish you well tonight.